and the hard work. And the Board of Supervisors, we want to thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Okay, our next presentation will be done by Supervisor Munzer, which uh, is declaring April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in San Benito County. This is a proclamation declaring Child Abuse Prevention Month. Whereas nearly 497,000 children in California are reportedly abused or neglected every year, and whereas everyone in the community should become more aware of child abuse prevention and consider helping parents raise their children in a safe, nurturing environment, and now therefore be resolved that the San Diego County Board of Supervisors do hereby proclaim the month of April 2016 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in San Diego County and urge all citizens to work together to help reduce child abuse and neglect significantly in years to come. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Board of Supervisors. As I said in the proclamation, it is a community responsibility to focus on child abuse prevention. And I encourage everyone um, in this room, as well as community members, that if you see or suspect any child abuse, report it to us. Our agency does strive to ensure the safety, health, and well-being of all our children in our community. In addition, we also work with families to uh, prevent child abuse and uh, wrap them with the services that they need in order for families to remain together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to item D is public comment. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on, on, on items of interest not appearing on the agenda. Uh, no action may be taken unless it is provided by government code section 54954.2. So, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Barney Richmond. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Marty Richmond from Hollister. Unfortunately, on the agenda at the city yesterday was the official notification from Gavilan uh, Board of Trustees that they have no interest in using the Leatherback site or any other site we were able to come up with for uh, the for a, a joint uh, a shot at an education center that we were going to try to put in there and they, uh, for them to sublease part of it. But they've officially said no. Uh, the report that was in a uh, uh, public news report that was on Benito Link had uh, quotes in there from their last Board of Trustees meeting, two of which struck me specifically, one of which was, uh, both of which were by the uh, retiring president, one of which said, quote, I don't understand why we don't have an education center in San Benito County yet. I could explain that to him if he would take a few minutes, but he's leaving shortly. And the second one was, he assured us, even though he's leaving, that we would have one a college here in 40 years. I really appreciated that. Um, I encourage you to work with the city together to find another source for, it, for higher education for San Benito County. Uh, the city mentioned possibly teaming up with uh, um, Cal State Monterey Bay, uh, perhaps uh, one of the um, other uh, items coming out of San Jose or another uh, pro public or private institution. We have got to put in uh, something uh, for uh, our uh, next generation to be able to go on an education. Yes, everyone does not need a college education. And yes, many people will be very successful without it and very smart without it. But you know, as a universal stepping stone, it doesn't hurt you to get an education. And for some, for a lot of people, not only some people, but for a lot of people, it's a necessary, it's a necessary step. Uh, I could quote you on end uh, and endlessly the uh, 
the, the data from the U.S. Department of Education and Department of Commerce about how much better people do economically when they have an education. And then you know from your own experience how much better people do in all walks of life when they do better economically because they have opportunities that other people don't. So I only have a few seconds left, and I hope you will work with the, with the, uh, with the city to find something else. And uh, also, uh, at some point in time, uh, I think we have to take some official position, be it a proclamation or a no-confidence vote uh, on the Board of Trustees. Uh, it, is more, it, is, it is not only unfortunate, people can disagree, but the way this has been uh, framed is, is really an insult to the people of San Benito County. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Marty. And Mr. Donald Gerland. Have you distributed those already? I have. Oh, okay. Um, good morning, everybody, um, and thank you for letting me talk here. Uh, I've included an excerpt from the Brown Act that's reminds you that uh, you can indeed make comments and, and ask staff to make comments in response to what I'm about to say. Um, I'd like to know when it was that the board gave instruction and, and authorization to Mr. Barnes in the uh, planning department or the community resource uh, 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 agency, uh, to resource management agency, to promulgate his own laws uh, that are completely opposite from the existing planning code. I've referred to chapter 25.392C about changing the use at a non-conforming uh, site, a grandfathered uh, uh, legal site. Um, as, as recently as 10 days ago, Mr. Barnes still insisted that I must maintain a grocery store or abandon my property. I want to downsize the grocery store to some kind of a professional office, uh, a plumber or a contractor or an architect or an engineer, somebody that doesn't have 150 customers a day and a lot of other hectic things that go on when you have a community uh, grocery store or convenience store. Mr. Bar and, the, and the law allows exactly that. The law very clearly says the planning code that's been in, in effect since 1966 says that I can uh, change to a similar use or, uh, or a uh, more restricted use. And that's exactly what I want to do, and that's exactly what I intend to do. I'd like you to read carefully this five-page letter I've given you, drafted by an attorney with references and, and citations of, of court cases and other laws that supports what's in our law, in our planning department. But Mr. Barnes and his staff think that they have the power to just make up their own codes and make up their own policy that's opposite of what's in writing, not unlike Mendiola that did. Um, this is um, a, a, a travesty, I think. Uh, I've had a lot of people calling uh, and, and asking about this kind of a policy and whether there one exists. Uh, and it turns out that apparently uh, they're telling other people that there is no freeze on substituting uh, a tenant in a building and changing the use from a grocery store to a gift shop or a, or a professional lawyer's office or something like that. And that's very appropriate to do according to the letter of the law, but it's being, I'm being told repeatedly that I cannot do that. And I'd like some input from the board uh, to tell me that uh, I'm wrong, that I can in fact follow the law, such as my attorney has put in writing and told me that I can do, and it's not enforceable to tell me to do otherwise, such as I've been told. Any response? Thank you, Mr. Gerlin. Mr. Clip, any other speaker cards? No other speaker cards. Anyone else? Any else? Uh, is there anyone else in the audience wishing to provide comments to the board? If not, we'll move on to item E, department head announcements. Mr. CAO. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we do have an uh, announcement, uh, a request from Health and Human Services uh, to remove item number 15 from our agenda. That particular item's on consent agenda, and uh, we'll be removing that completely. Um, the other items out of administration, it's a reminder to your board, April 5th, there is a meeting scheduled. Um, it's been approved by um, the Planning Commission having a joint meeting with the board on April 5th at 6 p.m. Uh, here in the chambers. 
Um, if there are any concerns or questions with that, please let administration know. We'll, we'll address that. There's also another uh, scheduled meeting as a reminder to the board and public, an assessment appeal hearing March 29th at 9 a.m. And then the uh, next item we have on our agenda uh, or department head announcements is our Health and Human Services Department. We have Jim Riding Sword um, here to provide a, an announcement to your board. Good morning. So I just wanted to announce to the board that uh, with the uh, cooperation of the Farm Labor Association and good budget work on part of staff, we are extending the warming shelter uh, for two weeks through April the 15th. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I have a, a question, I have a question. Uh, how are we doing with that, the uh, budget for that? Are we under or is we're, it? Uh, we're well within budget. Well within budget. To, that, that gives us the ability to extend. So we're spent, uh, spend it all at the end of two weeks is what the, what we have in mind? Uh, you know, I didn't ask staff if we're going to spend it all. Uh, they okay. told me that there was sufficient funds to go through two weeks. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I know that they're having uh, further discussions uh, with the Farm Labor Association about what we might do after that. Okay. As far as what we're due next year or <coughs> going forward um, for this, you know, ongoing? Uh, next year uh, depends upon uh, actions that are taken by the board, but we... Uh, we continue to have good relationships with the Farm Labor Association, and if needed, we can go back there. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Patel. Thank you, Jim. Okay. We also have another announcement out of our um, Behavior Health Department. We have Ellen Yamamoto here. He's our Behavior Health Director to provide a department head announcement. Good morning, and thank you for letting me make this announcement. Um, we have a uh, partnership relationship with Cal Mesa, better known as the California Mental Health Services Administration. We belong to the organization as part of our joint powers agreement, as do most county behavioral health departments in the state. We work with Cal Mesa to put together statewide projects for prevention and early intervention on mental health issues. And they're extending an opportunity to us, so we partnered with them on this opportunity. And we want to extend the, uh, the invitation to the Board of Supervisors for an event that they're sponsoring at the Dual Language Academy, which is at the Gabilin Hill School. The event will be on Thursday, April the 7th from 9 o'clock to 10 a.m. And the event is called Walk in Our Shoes. My apologies to Emmaus House for the similarity and the sounding of the name. I did not have any input on that. But for you, Supervisor De La Cruz, if you attend, I guarantee you will not walk in pain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this particular event it is really targeted for 9 to 13 year olds. It's a musical skit presentation and they have assembled a group of high school kids to do this presentation and it's about their true life stories about their experience in seeking mental health help and experience of mental illness and their journey to recovery. And then we'll facilitate after this 35 minute presentation a Q&A period of about 15 minutes. We will have mental health clinicians on site to deal with any feelings or issues that might arise for the kids that this presentation goes to. So uh, I will leave with your clerk of the board some invitations for each of you. And please note that there is an RSVP required to the representative from Cal MHSA and uh, the address for that person to contact Ivan Jaramillo is at the bottom of the page on your invitations. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. That's all the announcements we have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. CIO. So moving on to item F, board announcements. Start to my left. Supervisor Barrios, any announcements? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I do. I attended the Friends of the Library Tea and Champagne fundraiser at San Juan Oaks on Friday. Very successful again. I believe this is their third or fourth annual, and I want to thank them for making the effort to raise money for the library. They do a wonderful job. Supervisor Munzer and I attended the Mobility Partnership meeting on Wednesday, the 9th of March, and there was a lot of discussion. One of the things that we were given information on is to decide at some point if we want to be a joint powers, if we want to have a joint powers agreement or a joint powers authority. We were educated a little bit on both, and so it was just food for thought, and we will make a decision 
at a later time. In, uh, in detail, we talked a lot about um, the, the sales tax initiative that initiatives that are coming in Santa Clara County and San Benito County. We gave them, we had a COG representative there who gave them information on what San Benito is moving forward with in regards to the sales tax. Uh, we also made a, um, a commitment to invite somebody from the high-speed rail uh, representatives to come and present to the partnership, so we will be having them at a future meeting. We talked a lot about uh, State uh, Route 25 and the issues and challenges that we have there, and uh, we were informed that the, it's been engineered, an engineered firm is going to be looking at the uh, existing plan that we have there so we can move forward and how we're going to plan out Highway 25. And the last thing is that um, we did receive an update on potential funding sources, including Metropolitan Transportation Commission. It's a good move, goods movement program, which of course we all know that goods move from uh, Highway, um, from US 5 to uh, 101 through San Benito County and Santa Clara County. And the 152 is included in this potential funding, so we will be informed of that opportunity at a future date. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You, Supervisor Barrios. Supervisor De La Cruz. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, um, Supervisor Patello and myself met with the representative for the city, city Hollister um, Medical Marijuana Committee, and there were some um, ideas that were floating around and, and um, ideas how we can work together, how it can, it can be a win-win situation. But at the end of the day, we kind of figured out that the city has their needs and the county has our needs, but at the same time, we agreed that we will meet maybe on our every, two main, every two months or on a monthly basis, if warranted, uh, for any ideas that we can work together as a joint as a joint effort right thank you supervisor supervisor Munzer. thank you mr chair um i'm very excited to announce last wednesday that hr 1838 conference and far clear creek bill was passed unanimously from the subcommittee and has moved on to the full committee and i think that's huge once that you know, usually when a bill gets out of the subcommittee, then it's it's lots it's smooth sailing from then on in, and so I'm hoping that that Congress and Far bill will pass the full Congress, signed by the president while he's still in office this year. I hope. Also, I want to announce that the Monterey Bay Air Pollution Control District uh, Board approved the guidelines for this year's AB 2766 grant which is the money that is usually give back to agencies to um, reduce air pollution through um, roundabout designs um, and also electric car purchases. And this year we actually voted to extend vouchers to private citizens to, for the purchases of electric vehicles. So uh, more details will be coming forth on that. So it'll be not only public agencies, but actually private citizens will be able to utilize that, that program. And then the only other thing would want to um, also mention that I'm very excited, first of all, with, with um, COGS, sales tax initiative going forward that it will solve not all of our transportation <coughs> issues and all of our road maintenance issues but it's going to go a long ways and working with the with vta and santa clara county that i think we can get something done much sooner than i ever thought with highway 25. thank you mr chair thanks supervisor Muzzer. supervisor patello yeah thank you mr chairman uh, a couple of weeks ago, I attended a legislative uh, day uh, up in Sacramento with uh, the Central Coast uh, Coalition, and it's a group of uh, uh, metropolitan planning agencies and, and transportation agencies uh, talking about uh, transportation uh, dollars. And, and last year, uh, I came back from that um, effort, 
feeling pretty confident that the state was going to address um, the road and highway issues that we face and, and there's not a meeting that goes by that we don't put a plug in that uh, our roads are falling apart our highways are falling apart uh, there's a lack of revenue uh, available to address even the basic maintenance and uh, Senator Bell had a bill which I th believe this uh, body supported last year and we were we were very optimistic that it was a probably find its way through the legislative system with the governor signing it which would have been a pretty much of a comprehensive uh, tax increase uh, for gas uh, registration vehicle weights and and so forth uh, user fees so to speak to bring the state the revenue needed and a share of it uh, allocated to the counties and and cities well it didn't get done last year and the same we went up with the same message asking the state to resolve what uh, uh, problems they have with their legislation to get some revenues um, you know not only for themselves to deal with the highway maintenance problem Heck, this last Sunday I was in my office and a lady pulled off a 156 with a blown tire hit a pothole and I ended up changing her tire and it, it's it's that bad uh, and needless to say our county roads are falling apart and that's why we need this uh, this cog tax um, to address that otherwise we're it, it gets more expensive by the day um, but the feeling and the impression that I left with, uh, with Sacramento was that it's a political year it's an election year and they're not going to raise any taxes and uh, and that's just it they're, they're, they're not going to do their job uh, I, I certainly hope that the people of our county um, recognize that we do have to address our roads and fix them and uh, the best you know we're not going to sit on our hands and we're you know if we're entrusted with this uh, tax measure we're get the job done so that's what I have uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor and hopefully Bertel. the state will come along in time eventually right. thank you supervisor the only, the only announcement I had was again to um, mention about the April 15th special meeting the joint meeting um, which will be 6 p.m. between the Board of Supervisors and the Planning Commission that was um, uh, an item that was um, part of our discussion at our board retreat and uh, you know and we made the recommendation to come back to have a special meeting and that meeting will just be to prioritize um, uh, our planning and to hear from uh, our planning folks to see where we're at uh, as far as this calendar year moving forward because you know um, there was a lot of issues that we had discussed affordable housing um, some CEQA issues and so we wanted to at least create this list of priority for um, our staff so. Mr. Chair, if I may? Or the 15th? Uh, it's scheduled for the 5th. The 5th. The 5th. What, okay. what did I say? 15th. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't had much sure. sleep. Oh, long, long I long haven't much, had sleep, uh, much sleep in the last uh, few days, but April 5th, 6 p.m. I apologize about that. Um, so moving on uh, to our consent agenda, with the exception of item 15, is uh, are there any members of this board that wish to pull any additional items? 18. 18. So 18 per Supervisor Botello. Are there any members of the uh, public who wish to pull any items? Seeing none, I will accept a motion for uh, all items on consent with the exception of 15 and 18. So I'll move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, there's a, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, 5-0. So we'll move on to item 18, which is Resource Management Agency. Uh, Mr. Mr. Barnes. Okay. Supervisor Patel. Yeah, thank you. I just had a few questions. I, so, we're 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 purchasing a a, a, a truck and a, and a trailer. Yes, sir. And yeah. did we do some sort of analysis to, um, as far as how much we need this this equipment to? You know, do we really, you know, is it replacing something that we have? 
No, it's it's. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's changing the practice that we use presently. This is this is specifically for um, transporting the the grading equipment, the the grader, for a bit, particularly between North County and South County. Right now, what we do is drive it on the highway at about 20 miles an hour. It requires a chase truck, and so it ties up two staff members and the highway for considerable periods of time while we while we transport the equipment. Um, as you know, there's high demand for, for grading uh, across the county, and so the equipment is constantly being transported. This would allow one operator, a truck driver, <coughs> excuse me, and a high-speed transport throughout the county. So it's much more efficient uh, in the long term than, than simply driving the grader, and it's easier on the, on the grading equipment itself. You know um, I know in the past we used to have uh, two graders. Uh, are we down to just the one or? I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, there's there's one at the yard. I'm not sure that it that it's operational right now. I'll I can check on that. Are we going to be challenged to get somebody that could, has a class one license or heavy equipment uh, license? I think we're okay there. Okay, and you know because you know it to have a truck and trailer. It, it seems like uh, if we're only going to use it for a few hours. So, uh, it, have we looked into maybe contracting with a, a sub hauler to move the equipment on a periodic basis? I can't say that we have. Um, I don't know for sure, but I do know that that the road crew and the and the public works ha staff have looked at various options, and this was the seemed to be the most cost effective in the long run. Mm -hmm. But I don't exactly know what what options they looked at. Okay. This item is uh, was on your agenda once before. Um, there was some technical difficulty with the with the contract, and so it's back before you again. It's exactly the same item that the board approved once before about a month ago or so. Yeah, and and reading the uh, information that we have in our packet, uh, we have the county contract, but it doesn't really call for any maintenance schedules or warranties by the. Um, uh, the folks that were buying uh, Central uh, Coast uh, County truck and equipment, I, I didn't see anything in there that, you know, the truck is guaranteed or the trailer is guaranteed for five years or, or I would imagine that's the case. But, uh, you know, um, I'm a little concerned about that. Okay, I'm, I'm sure there is a warranty. Um, I don't know what the length of it is, but I can look into the details of that and provide it for you. Um, as you know, uh, the, the, the county maintenance folks, the yard folks, are, are well versed in uh, heavy equipment maintenance um, and have been, no pun intended, but using baling wire and, and other tricks to get stuff far past its extended life cycle. So it, yeah, we're they, in pretty good with shape. the graders, I think Supervisor Munzer and I are familiar with the problems that I'm, they've had for the last few are. years with them and, and with the changing of the uh, requirements for the air quality. Diesel, right. Uh, it, the equipment's outdated, and, but I Which just wonder is. if it made more sense to buy a new grader and keep one in the north uh, part of the county and one grader in the south like they had in the past. and. Uh, rather than, and instead of buying a truck well it would yeah it would still have to be transported around from from a work site to work site and and so the issue becomes not as extensive perhaps but um, still still present and still constitutes wear and tear on the grader itself as it traverses the road at, at highway speed right. 20 miles an hour whatever it is okay thank you at this Other time, questions? are there any um, additional questions or um, or comments from the board? I'll open it up to the public. Questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll bring it back for a motion. Well, um, I pulled it. I, I think um, with some of the answers to the questions I had, I'm still a little concerned about what other options were weighed and why we decided to go uh, and buy a truck and a, and a trailer it, it just seems like um it's a lot of money to spend and i i was so i'm a uh, probably not support this at this M time mr chair um supervisor Bateau, um 
we, we actually, at our private business, we kind of made a decision to to rent and to lease instead of actually own equipment because we want to use it maybe once or two months. I was wondering if that's the same kind of scenario, scenario kind of looking well, at. Uh, I kind of feel that way too, that maybe we should lease it and have a l less of an, a capital outlay yeah. and then write one big fat check and, and yeah. have to maintain the equipment and I'm sure it's in good shape and, um, and in some cases it makes sense, but it's it's a lot of money for an outlay for uh, equipment that I don't think we're used as much as, you know, a, a commercial private sector would. Uh, Mr. Chair, if we could bring Brent back up, uh, maybe we can ask him some further questions so that we can sure. um, either table this, you know, put, bring this back. I. Brent, I want to know how um, how soon do you need to have this truck? Are we using the grader pretty much every week, every month, that it would be necessary to get this as soon as possible? This is this is a uh, it's in the budget. It's been uh, talked about for quite a long time. Um, the it's grading season. Um, so we would we would actively be using this. We would, we, if you like, we'd be happy to to uh, have you continue it for two weeks and and uh, bring it back. No, we can answer some more questions. Well, and the other comment that I would make is that I know you were concerned, Supervisor uh, Botello, that maybe getting a subcontractor or somebody to move the equipment for us, but they are not always available. And if we right. need it immediately, we we have to call it in, for make sure that. And it may not work with the scheduling. It right. will, may hold up uh, our staff, you know, our, our employees to Quite do the work. Quite possibly. It, it, it's a lot of our, our work is short turnaround, short notice kind of work, and particularly in grow season when uh, haulers are very busy, it might, might be uh, problematic and, and expensive seasonally. Mm -hmm. And I guess my last question would be, Brent, is that we did get other quotes, obviously. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and we and this was the best one. So this is not an over, you know, they're not overcharging, which can be a tendency right. when people know that it's government. Right. And I'm hoping that that isn't the case here. I don't believe that you would no, we, let that we happen. We did go through the entire bid process. You, you went to the, mm -hmm. okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, Supervisor Munzer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, comment. I, I, I passed the grader. I was coming into town, and it was added for South County. <laughs> of course. <laughs> With the chase truck, and I just kind of shook my head, you know, knowing it was taking two guys to get the grader down to South County, probably probably an hour, an hour and a half, wherever yes. it was going, to even get down there. Um, so that's my comment. The, the, the question I had, Brent, did you say we, we approved this already, but it had to come back to us because yes, of a contract issue? So we've already approved the purchase of this trailer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, just, it's only here before us because of the, I don't remember the what the issue language. was with the, with the contract. There was something with the, some detail in the contract that was not done correctly. So we're coming back to you for okay. reapproval. Okay, so uh, again, I'll bring it back to the board for uh, oh, yeah, one more uh, kind of thought. Uh, it, because I, I know in the <clears throat> past we've had two graders, mm -hmm. and then we start having pr issues with probably both of them, I guess, because they're, and then we bought another <laughs> one. Now, are we down to one, just one grader in the county? I honestly don't know the answer to that, that, that whether we have one operating grader or not. Um, yeah. I be, don't know. I'll look. And the condition of that grader, uh, you know, is something that maybe we should be, instead of, you know, spending money on a truck and a trailer that's over 200 grand, which we may end up ha having buy another grader anyway, mm -hmm. you, you know, we should have redundancy. Uh, when one goes down, we still could operate. Uh, I just, th that's the question I have is, you know, and that's why I wouldn't mind seeing this come back again. But if the majority of board feels we should go forward I, I'm certainly right. fine with that I'm not so, saying sleep okay so I'll um, I'll bring it back to the board I'm ready to move the item I'm yeah. not sure if anyone else is yeah. but I'd be happy to you know we can also c continue this item if if uh, yeah. there's consensus on the board yeah mr. chair I know that uh, Brent alluded to the fact that this is grading season we do need to have it in operation and out there working I'm going to make a motion to approve, but I would last, like to ask Brent to come back with uh, giving us information on what equipment we do have 
and if what condition they're in and maybe a plan for future uh, planning for either purchasing, leasing, whatever the case may be. Sure. Okay. Is You're there right. a second? Uh, that's my motion. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Okay. Uh, the motion carries 3-2. Madam Supervisor, your, your request is very timely. It's budget season. <laughs> <laughs> See, if I would have had uh -oh. more, more attention to my I roads, I would have voted yes. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. Anything. Okay, so moving you on. You realize you just gave him, gave him permission to come I back did, and ask I for did. more equipment <laughs> in the next <laughs> year's budget. <laughs> so moving on to the it. regular agenda, look to our county administrative officer for item number 21. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we have um, a report that's going to be provided to you by uh, Long-Term Care Commission. Um, and uh, I had scheduled uh, Pauline Delvidi Delvidia to uh, present this, and um, so we have somebody here from the Long Care. <laughs> My name is John Balutz. I've been a member of the Long-Term Care Commission for San Benito County for about eight years now. And... Um, uh, I've got two issues that the group, you know, the commission has asked me to bring today to your attention. Um, the first is to tell you about a new program that helps folks who are in long-term care paid for by Medi-Cal to transition back to a community living. I got a little brochure here I can leave um, that, that describes the program. Um, it's the California Community Transitions Program. Um, and it's a program that Health Project Center, the, the organization that I'm executive director of, um, has contracted with the state of California to provide. And essentially, this program came out of a out of civil rights legislation from the Supreme Court of the United States, stating that funds um, paid for by the government for someone to stay in long-term care um, also have to be available if somebody chooses to live in a community-based setting, so in a, which is, of course, cheaper and in, in, in where folks want to be. So um, this was California's program to really um, take the opportunity to say, hey, if, if we're paying for someone to be on, with, on Medi-Cal to stay in a long-term care facility, we should pay for other services for them to be at home. Um, so this program is now available um, to anyone in San Benito County who's on Medi-Cal and in a long-term care facility who may not have much money and may, because of the challenges of housing or services, um, be finding it very difficult to, 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 to move in a community-based setting. So, you know, first month's rent, uh, security deposit, uh, supportive services, whatever that may be. So we'll, um, in essence, work with anyone who um, meets that criteria and, uh, uh, would love to, you know, if you run across constituents who are in that t tough situation, we'd love to help them out there with that program. Um, so, you know, that, that's something that um, it's a brand new program, and you know, and, and we, the Long Term Care Commission really wanted to, you know, to wants to get the word out that that's there and available for folks. Um, the second issue I wanted to bring up was a recommendation from the commission. I think you got that ahead of time in your packets. Um, but real briefly, in California, 36% of California seniors don't have enough income to meet their basic needs for food, shelter, transportation, medical care. We heard from public health today about how a little bit of prevention can go a long way in both helping people's health as well as um, saving money. Um, in there, we have a, a, a declaration of war on senior hunger, which is uh, something that came out of the California Association of Area Agencies on Aging. And the uh, San Benito County Long-Term Care Commission has supported this. And along with that comes an augmentation to the California state budget, essentially to pay for food and meals for seniors. Um, we think that that's a way to save money as well as save dignity uh, of folks. Certainly uh, all the problems that come from poor nutrition <laughs> um, can cost a lot more down the road. Um, so we're urging you to support that position and to urge Assembly Member Alejo and Senator Canelo to also to vote on that position. Um, and, and, and for more information about it, you can see the Declaration of War on Hunger, which is there, and it really shows how it can really save money to buy more food for folks, and, and that would be fair for local folks as well. So um, those are the two issues that um, I wanted to bring to your attention today and certainly be happy to answer any questions and look forward to, you know, continuing to advise and, you know, to advise, advise you all. And thanks for the opportunity yeah. to speak. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a Mr. question Tyler? for yeah. the speaker. Yeah. Um, 
Has any other counties um, within the region uh, supported that le uh, legislation or cities? Uh, do you have uh, some s sort of sample resolutions or something along those lines? No, I could look to get a sample resolution for you. Um, it, um, different municipalities around the state are being asked to support it because it is a real way to, to show that this isn't just um, a few people talking, that it's really a, a large number and having the municipalities do that. So I can follow up. Um, and see if I can get you a sample from someone else who's done it. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious as far as what other counties or, or cities have done uh, to move this forward, and, and um, a list of that uh, information would be helpful. Very good. I'll follow up and, and get that to you. Are there any other questions from members of the board? Mr. Chair. So Bart uh, a resolution Resolution to support your effort. That would be great, um, you know, and we're recommending that however, however you want to come out, that you would, yeah, support that. Yeah, I think the resolution would be great. Uh, I'm sure that if other counties have supported it, if you could get us a sample of resolution through the clerk of the board, and then we can, we can see. Mm -hmm. I, I love the way this was done and the formula that was used to really address the numbers, because it looks like you know you know, the state of California knows how many people out there are suffering with lack of the most essential, you know, uh, services that are, that they need. And so, uh, so I appreciate the way, the way that it was done, and uh, I certainly will support such an effort. Well, thank you, and that would be, that'd be wonderful. Excellent. Any other comments from members of the board? I'll open it up to uh, some comments or questions from members of the public. See none, I'll bring it back, and this doesn't require any action from the board, so thank you for your report. Thank you for the opportunity, I'll follow up with a sample. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to item number 22, County. this is coming out of the County Administrative Office. Thank, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, as your board's aware, we've been in negotiations with various uh, labor groups within our county, and today we're pleased to present to you a MOU um, codifying an agreement between DSA and the county. I want to thank the DSA as well as staff for all their work that they've uh, done on on this um, on this MOU and this agreement. And today we have Barbara Thompson, our assistant CAO, uh, to present uh, those items. Um, this new MOU um, was voted upon by the DSA in February. Now it's brought for the Board of Supervisors for the board's approval. It has a term of January. Uh, uh, to, I'm sorry. It, go, it runs through September 30th, 2015. It implements a fixed dollar contribution to the health insurance. It allows the exit from CalPERS after input from the, the insurance committee and final decision by the Board of Supervisors. It provides for a 2% salary increase. It provides for a $1,500 bonus, dollar bonus payment upon adoption. It sets forth uh, post pay for deputy sheriffs and sergeants. It has a provision for cash out of probation <coughs> officers and DA investigators, similar to the other bargaining units, such as SEIU. And it reduces the retiree health benefits for new employees to the PEMCA minimum, which will greatly affect the OPEB liability for the county. Um, the recommended action would be to adopt the resolution that's presented to the Board of Supervisors today um, for approval. So if the board has any questions. Are there any questions uh, or comments from members of the board? Just a comment because it made me laugh as I was reading it. It talks about the count shall maintain life insurance. I know it means county. Okay. <laughs> Last time I heard it, we didn't have a count. But <laughs> okay. Uh, it, so it's on Section F, life insurance. So just Section a, add a Y to, to count. Okay. I'll okay. do that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this time, I'll open it up to the public for questions, comments. See now, I'll bring it back to the board for a... Uh, a decision and it would be the staff recommendation set forth in the agenda okay. which would be to adopt the resolution and direct the county administrative officer and the county auditor to take a necessary administrative actions to, appropriate to effectuate the purpose and intent of the action and authorize the CAO to uh, make any technical edits that's later identified thank you Barbara if council has read the staff recommendation okay. I will make a motion to approve per that recommendation is there a second Second. Okay. Is a uh, motion a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank, Thank you. you, Barbara. Okay, moving on to item 23, is that of our resource management agency, Mr. Barnes?
Mr. Chairman, good morning again. Uh, this is really, I'm the messenger. <laughs> Uh, this issue started before I before I arrived here last summer. It's been going on for at least a year. Um, it involves uh, the Otis elevator in the in the Sheriff's and Public Works and Planning Building at uh, Technology Parkway, and the issue is essentially a, a disagreement about the the terms of the contract for maintenance repair of the elevator. It, it is, as you I'm sure you know, red tagged by the state. Um, because it has not been maintained because we cannot agree on a on a contract with Otis, which is the proprietary uh, maintainer of this particular elevator. Um, I don't have any more presentation. I would direct your questions and concerns and comments to council's office where this seems to have resided for the last year. Are there questions or comments from members of uh, the board? Looks like um, in the staff recommendation uh, in our packet, uh, we've had four options. And so staff is looking for the board to provide um, some direction on moving forward on one of those options. So. Yeah, I got a comment, Mr. Chairman. I, I think this is really too bad. Uh, this has gone on way too long. Otis is the elevator people. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, how can we be that far off on terms of maintenance compared to somebody that's been in the business forever? Um, you know, this is real frustrating that we're even talking about it here. It really, really is. And I would suggest whoever is doing this, get it done. It, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, it, it can't be. Uh, it's not a, you know, Otis is the company that fixes elevators. They, we need this elevator fixed for the public. And uh, uh, we shouldn't be even talking about this. It, it's something that's absolutely needed. So I, I'd say if whoever's doing this, or it, if it's, you know, RMA or uh, county council's office, get it done that's my comment okay supervisor munzer thank you mr chair as i mentioned uh congressman fard bill on on the clear creek when i was testifying one of the congressmen women asked the question why has this risen to our level in in getting clear creek reopened and i have the same question here why has this risen to our level i i'm in total agreement I with supervisor Batello that this has gone on way too long it needs to get done and it needs to get done now just like like we need to get these bridges built and and they keep getting bogged down in issues and it needs to get done now as as supervisor Patello said thank you mr chair thanks supervisor munzer do you have a comment Oh, yes. I think part of the reason that it's um, had the issue that's made it raised to the Board of Supervisors is they haven't, uh, to date, uh, agreed with the standard indemnification clause, and they've greatly eliminated the liability. And so it requires board action to actually assume the risk of liability. Shirley indicated that she had more action as of uh, more information as today's date. So I'll let her input, and then I'll kind of give a brief summary of the, just the knowledge of the risk that the board would be taking on it has to decide whether it wants to approve the contract with the language that they propose and then we can move forward thank you Barbara so um, I share the board's frustration we have had emails back from them like three rounds of review saying that their general manager their regional manager had approved the contract and then they come back and ask for more changes it's it's been a give an inch take a mile kind of a discussion um, as of this morning I got emails from them yet again saying we sent this to legal for review we'll send you some revisions and I said well you, we had reached an agreement. You asked for two more changes. I put them in the contract. Why are you still sending it back to legal? So this has been the frustration with this contract. But as Barbara says, they're asking to basically limit. So let's say due to their faulty repair or inspection, somebody is injured in the elevator. Um, 
basically anything over and above uh, in this contract, it would be fifteen thousand, but other versions of it were as low as four. Anything over four thousand would be the county's liability to assume. And you know, for, if somebody's injured in an elevator, you can imagine that can come to rather large uh, judgments. Supervisor Munzer. So what? What in D two? Um, it talks about a two million dollar self insurance policy that they are willing to write us in on. What? What is that? Well. Exactly. That was in there previously before they insisted on the limitation to they're only going to cover up to whatever we've paid under the contract in any damages claims. So it's kind of uh, meaningless at this point because they've inserted a limitation of liability that would essentially not give us access to that $2 million policy. So is the contract before us now? Is that not what we're going to be approving? It, I think that the option that you have to have is option three because they still haven't given final approval to a contract that we can br bring to the board. So option three would be to delegate authority to the purchasing agent, the CAO, to continue negotiating with Otis Elevator regarding further th changes to the contract and authorize the purchasing agent to execute the final contract. So basically, once they present us the contract, if the board is willing to accept the risk of liability should anything happen, like um, under the counties, if we can't get a better indemnification agreement, then the question is, can, can we enter in that agreement even if it does not comply with our standard indemnification agreement? And that's, as long as the board makes that as an informed r knowledge, and, and directs staff to negotiate the best agreement that we can with them, then we can go ahead and execute a contract after we get a final approval back from Otis Elevator. If the board does not want to assume that risk, then you look at the alternative options. So, and there was, uh, you know, there's different variations on that. So, yeah. So the one thing would be to direct uh, us to enter into a one-year contract with them and then look at other options. But um, right now, you can enter into a contract after we get a contract back that they're willing to enter into, then you can authorize us to enter into that contract even if it doesn't comply with our standard indemnification requirements. Okay. Now, how the hell do you get hurt in an elevator to begin with? Well, I think we're just pulling hairs over. No, I know. But it's also <laughs> things like damage to the building, for example, or just any sort of liability. They're, some of their drafts of the contract have really limited it. I think you guys are so. thinking too much into it. And, uh <laughs> Possibly, um, but that I mean that is our job to let you know that this is the it's risk. your job, <laughs> and then you can say no. We're ha we're comfortable with that risk, and we want to move forward. Remember, we are professional paranoids. So. Yeah. Yeah. Paid. <laughs> Paid professional Paid paranoids. Pro so, oh, but uh, uh, yeah, I could trip on the curb walking into the building too. <laughs> oh, boy. So this down. is <laughs> this is an unfortunate situation. It's somewhat. Um, rare i i can't explain otis's actions nonetheless the repairs need to be made the contract is not for a large amount i do believe that while it's very annoying that otis will not stand behind its work uh and um it is a serious legal issue about the fact that they won't indemnify the county for any damages caused by their work. I do believe the county's insurance would cover any accidents that uh, occurred there, and I think it's probably pretty remote that something like that would happen. So the, the board, if it feels comfortable assuming the risk, should just instruct staff to go ahead and sign the contract as is and, and get the repairs done. And that would be option Thank three you, in case they come back with a different contract. Okay, at this time I want to open up to the public for questions, comments. See now and bring it back to the board um, for some action. Uh, Mr. Chair. Direction. Um, so, Barbara? So option one is not an option because we don't know if we have a, a, a contract before us that Otis has would have reached. It would be a combination of option one and option three. If, if, if you wanted to have a staff to investigate that, you could approve options one and option three in case they don't approve the one year maintenance and repair contract that's included well, in the contract. Well, I don't I don't want to be back here in a year doing this again. No, they so. we're ready to move forward. The question is they need to actually approve a contract then then we're ready to sign it. Okay. Um, now that we have the board's informed consent on it. And, and who is the purchasing agent? It'd be Ray. And so why why is it Because we the purchasing agent as opposed to CAO. Because just 
He, because he has authority under the government code as the purchasing agent, not as the CAO. It could say, yeah. I mean, it's the CAO. Okay. All right. So the question is, I guess we would recommend if you're willing to, uh, if the board wants to investigate, um, uh, investigating a long-term solution for replacement of the elevator, if that if that is one of the things that the board wants to do, or if they just want to uh, approve the contract and just move forward. So. Okay, I'm ready to make the motion to approve option three. Okay, there's a motion uh, for option three. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion is second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Steph. Okay, thank you. Right. So, moving on, item 24, our elected department heads. I'll look to our uh, county administrative officer, Mr. Espinoza. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. As the board's aware, um, they requested uh, the ad hoc to meet uh, with the elected officials. Uh, we actually were able to meet, uh, staff included, uh, March the 14th in the evening time. And uh, from there, um, we were discussing longevity and the possibility of moving forward with that through CalPERS. We still have not received anything from CalPERS yet. Uh, so with that being said, um, there was another item of consideration during uh, the meeting, during the, the um the conversation and that was to move forward with the G step like other um, uh, labor groups or other employees within the county. Uh, so with that being said, I, I wanted to hand it off to the ad hoc or to Supervisor Margie Barrios and she can add some further comments. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, as far as the, the G step, uh, the date, uh, Ray, for employees that would hi were hired prior to uh, what is the date? Yeah, I believe it was in 2014. 2014. Yeah. So in lieu of the longevity, which like our CAO said, we haven't heard from CalPERS to uh, find out what their interpretation of the longevity clause is. So the group is willing to drop that at for, for now. It may come back at a future date, but for now it will be gone. And they will be um, able to go to G-STEP provided that they were hired prior to October 2014. Uh, just like some of the other groups that we have, some of the other units. So it would all be equitable, um, including the, the COLA, the 40-hour admin live, leave that we've already spoken about before. So there are no changes to their request other than the longevity, which is being dropped at this time. Okay. Supervisor Rivas. No, I don't think that there's anything else I can add. Um, just maybe some clarification. Eligibility to, D, to the G-STEP would be uh, having been hired prior to 2014. Um, they would be eligible for G-STEP when? Immediately or would it be effective immediately? Or It would be the same. It would be the same as, as the other group, so the exact uh, same uh, language that SEIU would have, we would, we would incorporate that incorporate. into this. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board? Okay, at this time I'll open it up to the public. Questions, comments from the public? Step on, step on up. Get my speaker card. I do not. <coughs> Sorry. Put so, so if you could just state your, um, All right. your, your um, name for the record. <laughs> my name is Michael Silverman. I'm the president of the San Benito County chapter of SEIU Local 521. Okay, um, the agenda item today is really about health care. The sacrifice of union members to win relief from the rising costs of health care and the new precedent of comparing San Benito County to 38 counties when your own rank and file employees are limited to a predetermined list of counties when negotiating for better wages and benefits. Giving elected officials the same benefits of rank and file workers for the first time, it's typical of a small county like ours. There's no harm, right? Well, wrong. The harm is done to the morale of workers, the reputation of the county, and a concession to the people of the county that elected office is a career position rather than attracting the best at their profession. The previous agreement with department heads talked about leadership. Well, when the leader of a department, our elected officials, have their health care premiums covered while their own employees struggle to make rent, how is that leadership? The rents in the 38 counties range from greater to less than the rents in San Benito County. 
Meanwhile, if a worker says, hey, I feel I should be making more money, well, a salary survey is performed, but with a predetermined list of counties. I can't cherry pick the counties I want to support my position, but the elected officials today can do so. There is no need for the board to be backed into a corner by career-minded politicians asking for a handout from an elected body. I request that this agenda item be pulled with a vote of no. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other members of the public wishing to provide a comment? Maybe we'll just slip. No, that's fine. Um, Marty Richmond, I, I disagree with the previous speaker just uh, on principle. Um, there, there are two different uh, issues here. Um, uh, you know, um, elected employee, elected, elected officials uh, don't get paid overtime. You know, I could go into uh, the differences forever. As far as the health care costs concerned, listen, we haven't solved that problem as far as, you know, any, you, you, you know, all, this, all the solving of the problem on the health care costs for everybody are all temporary until the next time because we have no control of what's going on. I did some research recently that showed that there are currently, uh, with uh, Covered California, 12.5 million Californians, about uh, uh, almost a third of the state on a Medi-Cal uh, with the covered California rolled in. And the cost per capita is exactly the same cost as you're paying on average for um, health care for public employees, about 90, 9,200, 9,300 bucks. Uh, and that's the same exact cost that the 358,000 em county employees are paying. And that's exactly the same cost as the 278,000 city employees are paying. And it turns out that Medi-Cal, for all this talk about single payer and all this, are paying exactly the same cost. And so, uh, and, and, and up here in Northern California, the rates, as you've seen on CalPERS, are just going skyrocketing every time around. And they're going nowhere but up. At the same time, the doctors are all forced to take less money because uh, my Medi-Cal, I got a Medi-Cal uh, re uh, report yesterday in the mail that uh, 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 some work that was done on me, uh, a surgery, uh, they, they billed Medicare for $1,000 or like $1,100, and Medicare okayed it and paid it $94. Okay, so they paid them 10 cents on the dollar, and they expect the guy to stay in business somehow. I don't know how. So the doctors are all going to groups, and pretty soon the doctors are going to go and look look for another profession okay and as you know what's going on at the hospital so you know as far as the health care costs are concerned i do the best you can because we're, we're we're not out of the woods we're going nowhere with it um no one can afford it this the public can't afford it the employees can't afford it no one can afford it and the idea that oh gee if we just got someone else to pay for it that would make it affordable that doesn't work either because it's not affordable and do, uh, in my last couple of seconds, I would not want to miss an opportunity to smack CalPERS once again uh, as a multi-billion dollar, a corrupt ridden operation that keeps having their bosses thrown into prison. You know, they could have a CalPERS trustee meeting in prison, okay, because that's where they're all at uh, for cheating and, and lying and, and selling out the workers. Uh, and they can't seem to answer a simple question about uh, longevity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marty, for your insightful comments. Um, any, other com or, um, any other comments from members of the public? Okay, see now, I'll bring it back to the board for uh, some direction, action. Uh, just another comment, Mr. Chair. I just want to say that this uh, uh, Board of Supervisors is always uh, trying to, you know, the benefits equity has always been on top of our list for all of our employees. We value all of them uh, very much. Uh, the elected took a different path to get their jobs, but they're no less, you know, hard workers than everybody else that works for the county. So with that being said, I will make a motion to approve her okay. staff recommendation. Is there a second? It's second. Okay, motion second. And then uh, just, you know, to call the 
question. You know, I um, agree with the comments that were made by Supervisor Barrios. I think that we've always tried to achieve a uh, level of equity when dealing with our employees, whether they're elected department heads or um, the members from SCIU or from the DSA. You know, we've done our best to try to to be fair with with, with all groups. You know, I, I I recall way back when when I first got um, became a member of this board and you know. Um, uh, you know, we we had uh, some difficult times with our budget, and there was a proposal I think to that really, um, you know, asked for some significant uh, some concession from our department heads at that time. I know that SCIU um, was really rallying around, you know, pushing this uh, this particular measure through. I think it results in like an 18% cut to our department heads, um, and sure. We didn't approve all those concessions, but we did reduce the salary of our department heads by, by a significant amount. Um, and this is just a way, you know, throughout the last year or so, you know, we've been trying to, 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 to help out our employees and to try to elevate salaries as much as we can. And, you know, and, and, you know this is only the beginning, we hope. You know, um, I, I know that uh, we've had some discussions to do um, a salary study for all our positions throughout the county because we uh, have recognized that we are at a significant um, uh, a disadvantage as, as, uh, as, as a county in, in attempting to recruit a lot of uh, the positions that we have open. Um, and we need to be um, more competitive and we recognize that part of that is offering more money to our employees, whether you're at the very top or you're at the very bottom. Um, and so certainly this is hopefully only a step forward and, and we certainly want to do it more. Um, any other uh, some comments or questions from the board? Well, I, I certainly uh, think that there's a skill set with our elected leaders that uh, some, sometimes could be undervalued. Uh, there's there's skills that in order to qualify for those offices, and and we all have gone through a, a, a period of time that you know we all sacrificed and. And I think this is breaking things, you know, more or less level again. But we still have a long ways to go addressing, you know, uh, areas of, the, you know, county government that needs to be studied for salary, uh, uh, for the competitiveness of, of other, you know, counties and uh, in the private sector. So we still have a lot of work to do. Absolutely. And so, you know, we're we're committed to that. So I, I support this, though. Mr. Chair. So as Dela Cruz. Um, <clears throat> from the beginning, of, I've said that I wanted to treat all employees the same. And, and it made in reference to, to the health insurance and the 2%. I, I don't support the motion that's going to be on the table. I'm going to vote no. I just feel that being an elected official, you don't have to be here. You can put in one hour or you can put in... 10 hours, and I know that we have excellent elected officials who are here 12 hours a day, and, and I commend them for being here. However, when, like us, we can be here one, one hour, or we can be here 12 hours. We're not entitled to vacation. We're not entitled to administrative pay. Uh, rank and file employees are because they clock in and they clock out to eight hours, and, and the department heads. And I just don't feel that giving all the other extras is fair to our rank and file, especially in, in light that they made sacrifices in the last a couple of years. And I understand that we're moving forward. We're going to start visiting our salary package for our employees. But at the same time, to give them a, a, a vacation, administrative, sick time, and then the ability to cash out on vacation when you're an elected official, knowing that you don't have to be here except for one minute, it's, it just doesn't make sense. I will, if the motion would have been for giving them the, the, the $2,500 and the 2%, I would have supported that. But it's not. It's a complete package, and I can't support that, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comments, Supervisor. Any other questions or comments? Okay, may this may time. I have the mo maker of the motion clarify the motion, please, because I'd like to add a part to the motion. So it would be to adopt the resolution approving the term and conditions of employment and adopt resolution electing to pay 0% towards the EPMC. Um, if I could have the words effective upon receipt of new signed waivers from all the elected department heads, because the signed waivers that we received pr previously were uh, associated with the previous proposal. So I'd like just to have that paperwork cleaned up. But you can go ahead and approve it today, and we'll collect those waivers. Okay, I will amend my motion to include that the new waivers will have to be signed with the new language per today's um, recommendation. 
Now, does the supervisor that provide the second? Okay. second yeah. All right. So we have a, a revised motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries 4 1. Thank you, staff. Um, so moving on to so our final item of the uh, morning um, or of the day or of this meeting, item 25, Resource Management Agency, Mr. Barnes. Mr. Chairman, uh, we are, staff is prepared to make a presentation on this. Uh, this, this stems from the general plan update that was concluded uh, last summer. Uh, however, Mr. Groves, the principal of, the, of EMC, wished to be here to discuss this. He was at a... I had a 10:30 meeting in Los Gatos and asked for this to be placed last on the agenda in hopes that he would be here. Again, we're happy to make a presentation to you and discuss it, um, but perhaps the board would entertain going to their closed session items and cleaning up those and then coming back to this entirely up to you. We can do this now if you like. I would rather wait, Mr. Chair, because there are, um, I believe that there may be some explanation by the, by the consultant and I yes. would like to hear that. You want to hear that? So, so he is on his way? I believe so. I will confirm, I will send him an email and hope he doesn't answer it from the car okay. um, to try and confirm that. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess we could adjourn to closed session. We don't have much longer in closed session. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll give him that leeway. At Whatever, that time. yeah. So, okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Welcome. So we will uh, re, uh, re, re adjourn back into uh, closed session. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> <sighs>